شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يؤلل فلا حادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستك حديث كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتذة برعة وكل برعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وكل دلالة في النار يعني as we began with the statements of, of learning kitab wa sunnah and taking tafsir of some qusar or short surahs similarly we take some explanations of some ahadith and these ahadith should be well known to everyone as those short surahs were well known to everyone. Amongst them are the ahadith that are contained in the Arba'ina Nawawiyya, the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi, Rahimahullah Rahmatun wa Rahimahullah Rahmatun Wasi'ah. These are ahadith that the average Muslim, the average person, ala tariqat al-najah, who wants success, the average person who wants to please Allah ta'ala, and enter the, uh, the, the Jannah, and please Allah ta'ala and to be in a safe situation and good situation in the Akhirah you will find that they will read these narrations and inshallah ta'ala they will try to find the explanations to these narrations and act upon these narrations implementing them in their lives for is a small collection of hadith that numbers something like 41, 42 a hadith and then Ibn Rajab came later and he added to that 48, to be made it 50 a hadith, and these have been explained by the scholars, and everyone has taken them and memorized them and learned them and studied them over the centuries. This is something from the heritage of the Muslims, that they have over the centuries taken a book such as this and learned from it and benefited from it. Nevertheless, today we take the hadith number 20 of, uh, in that book, and Al-Haya min Al-Iman, he entitles it. And Abi Mas'ud Al-Uqba bin Amr of Ansari Al-Badari, Radhi Allahu Anhu, Qala Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna mimma adrak al-nasu min kalami nabuwwat al-Ula, Iza lam tastahi fasna' ma shi'ta. Wa rawahu Bukhari. On a third, Abu Mas'ud Al-Uqba bin Amr of Ansari Al-Badari, رضي الله عنه the one who participated in Badr he said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said among the words people obtained from the first prophecy and he those prophets who preceded our prophet Muhammad alayhi salam which will explain what that means نبوة the first prophets amongst the words people obtained from the first prophecy are if you feel no shame then do as you wish if you feel no shame, then do as you wish. This is something very easy to learn and memorize in the Arabic language. إِنَّ مِمَّا أَدْرَكَ النَّاسُ مِنْ كَلَامَ نَبُوَّةِ الْأُولَى إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْنَعْ مَا شِئْتَ إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْنَعْ مَا شِئْتَ If you feel no shame, if you have no modesty, then do as you wish. Then do as you wish. This particular hadith is related by Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. 
So I understand you something of the meaning of this hadith we will try to do in these few moments that we have in the Allah and take some minute from, from this insha'Allah ta'ala. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from what reached the people min kalam nabuwatul ula from the first prophets. Brothers, if you can come closer. Oh, I mean, if it gets crowded back there. I see some brothers looking around like it's not space. If it gets crowded, come closer to Ibn Allah Ta'ala. Min kalam nabuwatul ula idha lam tastahi fasna' ma'ashit If you have no shame, if you have no haya, if you have no modesty, then do what you will. This hadith is a hadith talking about one of the branches of Iman. As you know, the Iman is 70 and something branches, as some hadith say. 70, some, 70 and something branches. It has parts. And Iman is such that every branch that is a branch of Iman, if it is removed, then there's a branch of Kufa there. There's a branch of Kufa in its place. From a branch of Iman is speaking the truth. A branch of Kufa is to lie. From the branch of Iman is to lower the gaze. Branch of Kufa is to look at whatever you want. From the branch of Iman is to pray to Allah Taala. And of course Kufa is to leave the Salat. Leave the Salat. But from a branch of Iman is to have modesty. Therefore, being immodest, being unchaste, not having any shame, is from a branch of the branches of Kufa. This should be understood clearly. So we're talking about a branch of the branches of Iman, and that is al haya sh shame, modesty, chastity. For the females, it is called hishma. A female should possess untha. Imra'a, Mu'mina, Muslima should possess Hishma. She should have Hishma. This is what is, this is a proper quality and a, a, a quality that is, must be there for the believing woman and the believing man. So, the Prophet Islam collected this kalam to the prophets who came before him. That's not a kalam huna ila ma, ma baki ili nas min From the ancient prophets. From the ancient prophets. From the time of Nuh alayhi salam. He connected to them that this were their words. Inna min ma adraka nas. What the people caught. What reached the people. From the ancient prophets. From the prophets who came before me. From the prophets who came at the, from the beginning of time. If you have no modesty, if you have no shame, if you have no quality that is in fact that would make you chaste, that would make you avoid committing sins, and so on and so forth, huna. What the people the Prophet is on statement, what the people caught. Other words of the first prophets, it means that this is words that the, that reach the people min kilam al anbiya from the actual words of the prophets sent by Allah. Prophets sent by Allah al anbiya. Wa man itra inhu fasha, yani that is spread amongst the people. And the people were relaying it generation after generation. That this is something that the ancient prophet said. That this is something that came by the prophet sent by Allah. If you have no shame, do as you wish. It was something well known amongst the people. It was something that was spread amongst the people. That they related it generation to generation. This is what it means. Spread amongst them. That these were the words of the, the early prophets. That some of what the prophets, ancient prophets said is this matter. Some of what the early prophets said is this particular matter. And he means by Nabuwatu Ula Maksubiha, the first prophets. The Awa'il al-Rusul. Nuh alayhi salam like this. 
the first of the prophets and messengers. And Adam was the first prophet. Nuh was the first prophet and messenger. The ancient prophets. So this is from their words. From the words of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Wa hakaza. Wa hakaza. Come close brother. Come close. He's pointing out that he comes, that you must come up insha'Allah. فَالْنَبُوَةِ الْأُولَى The ancient prophets, so the first prophets, what is meant by النَّبُوَةَ السَّابِقَ بَعِيدَ The prophets that came long time ago, they are far away from what the people inherited from words. So what it means is that it is the first of what the ancient prophets have said, or it is that words that the ancient prophets have said. So if we say Nabuwatul Ula, you should understand in your mind that it means Al Mutakadimun, the first messenger and prophets. But Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and the children of and the prophets of Bani Israel, Dawood and them, they're called the Nubuwata Mutaakhira, the later prophets. The late the prophets who came later. Or Rusul Mutaakhirin. So the Prophet statement. What the people reach are the words of these ancient prophets. It means that this gives it some power and support. That this is tashri. This is legislation. And these words have fa'id adima, a great benefit. This is what is supposed to come from hearing that this is the word of prophets. If you hear, well, this is the word of the prophets, the ancient prophets. Then it's what? Laftat al-Nadr. You look at the ihtimam, the importance of these words. These are the ancient prophets speaking to you. And this is what they have to say. Qala illam tastahi. If you don't have any shame, if you don't have any modesty, fasna ma'ashaita. Do what you want. Do what you will. Tastahi. And if you don't have haya, like in ayah, Allah la yastahyi, where Allah is not modest to the end of the ayah. Kolu huna his statement, lam tastahyi fasna ma'ashit. If you don't have any haya, you don't have any shame, you don't have any modesty, this is mentioning al haya, like it comes in a hadith to show that it's a branch of iman. It is something that a person possesses, brother, inside. Inside themselves. And sometimes you get it naturally. You were just born, you were just born a modest person. A person having shame. There's just some things that you just won't do. Because that's the way, that's your makeup. Then there's another type which is you have to gain it. You have to strive for it. You have to achieve it. You have to make yourself take on that particular quality and that particular, those particular characteristics. And it comes an authentic hadith that a man said to the Ansar and he was admonishing him about not having, or having too much haya. You have too much modesty. You have too much shame. لماذا تستحي? Why are you having all this shame and modesty? لماذا أنت كذا وكذا? Why are you like this and like that? The Prophet Islam said, Da'ahu. Leave him. Then a haya, because modesty, shame, لا يأتي إلا بخير. It doesn't come. It doesn't bring about except good. It doesn't bring about except good. Fahaya, modesty, and having shame is an inward branch. And it can be natural or it can be that which you have to achieve through learning and practicing and trying to inculcate the quality. al muqtasib meaning that if you don't have it, ma'amur you are ordered, we are ordered to achieve it. We find that we don't have shame and we don't have modesty. We are lax in our responsibilities. We are missing a branch of Iman and we're ordered to acquire it. We are ordered to acquire it. 
And what we are ordered to acquire is to be mustahyan min Allah. To have shame and be modest in front of Allah. And this is how yaku mubta'id and muharramat that will be far away from the things that Allah has forbidden. And those things that Allah is displeased with. And that we carry out the orders of Allah muqbilan alayha, focusing and turning our heart and our limbs and everything that we have towards obeying Allah. Because this is something that Allah loves and something that Allah is pleased with. So the modesty which you must, we must achieve is that which must be in the heart that makes a servant stay away from what is haram. And it makes them not leave that which is obligatory. For the one who goes into everything that's haram and he leaves that which is obligatory, he has no haya. So this haya is mulazama. You can say it's, it, it's connected, strongly connected, chained, if you will, to iman. So they say haya, modesty and shame, and iman. Where you find one, you find the other. If there's no modesty and shame, there's no iman. And if there's no iman, there's no modesty and shame. And this is brought about to our ilm, knowledge, well, I'm salih and righteous actions. And, and, and having haya will make you seek knowledge and will make you do righteous action. It becomes a personal quality that a person can obtain, but one must strive to obtain it. The statement of Prophet A.S. is alam tastahi fasna ma'ashit. If you don't feel any shame or you don't have any modesty, then do what you will has been explained in two ways by the scholars. They have two different understandings of it. We break it down, inshallah, basically to this. That is an order. That this, this ibarah, this expression, is an order. And the others say, it is not an order. And based upon whether you, they take this expression to be an order, or rather they take it, take it to be information, or other than order, this is how they have understood it. Based upon them understanding it to be an order or not, they have the, their understanding that they have brought. Those who say there's an order, they say the meaning of the hadith, that if it's a matter that you want to do, anything you want to do, anything you desire to do, and it's something that normally an individual is not shame of. Those upon istikama, people of righteousness. Those are, 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 who have taqwa, they're not shamed of, of it. It's not a bad behavior in their viewpoint. Fuss not my shit. Do what you want. Because these are the matters that none of the believers are shamed of or have modesty regarding. So in their understanding, this group of ulama, and we say that the hadith can mean both of these, can carry both of these meanings, that if it's something you desire to do, whatever it is, and it's not something shameful, not something looked down upon, not a bad behavior, considered a bad behavior amongst the believers, then go ahead and do it. Then go ahead and do it. Ya'ani, the kan amra laysa haraman. He's saying again, that if the matter is not forbidden, and it's not that which goes against proper adept or manner or behavior, and it does not uh, nullify one's rajula, manhood, or nullifies the female's quality of being feminine, and it's not that you are being short regarding obligation, not something that the legislation say you should be shamed of. Don't worry about it. Do it. Because this hadith is an evidence that there's nothing wrong with it. This is a statement of a jama'ah, a group of Ahl Ilm, of the scholars. Amongst them is Ishaq, Ibn Rahawayt, and Imam Ahmad, and others. 
wa qawl al-thani or the second statement in who lays the amr that this hadith is not an order and they have two ways that they look at that ahlul ilm the people of knowledge first group says it came in a manner of a threat it came in a manner of tahdid a warning and a threat and tawbih yani dalam tastahi you ain't got no shame you don't have no shame you don't have no modesty to do what you want to do like a tahdid yani dalam yani, yakun lak haya if you don't have the modesty you don't have the shame that stops you from falling to that which is haram and that which is a munkar that which is evil and that which is lewd if you don't have the haya you don't have enough modesty about yourself or enough shame about yourself that which will that which will make you be concerned about the obligations rather than leave them and neglect them and sometimes forsake them fast na ma shit do what you want to do fa inna man la yahya lahu la khair fi because the one who has no shame and no modesty there's no good in that person once again man la haya lahu la khair fi the one who has no modesty no shame there's no good in that individual wa hadha yakun kharaj at tahdid this is like a threat a warning because it says if al in the arabic do it do what you want to do do what you want to do you will pay the consequences do what you want to do and Allah will deal with you do what you want to do and Allah has a place for you do what you want to do and Allah has a torment for you do what you want to do and Allah has a torture for you do what you want to do and Allah will deal with you if that go ahead do what you want and this comes in many ayat of Quran where Allah says to the mushrik to the fusilat i'malu ma shi'tum do what you want to do He's talking to those who have committed the greatest crime and had his associating partners with him. He says, "Malu ma shaytum, do what you want to do." Hadha mukhatib bihi al-mushrikeen, he's addressing the mushriks. Ya ni'malu ma shaytum min a'mal, do whatever actions you want to do. And this is not ikhtiyar, this is not giving them a choice. But it's a warning. For Allah Ta'ala Ta says in other verses, "Duk Taste it. I need a hellfire. Look. Taste it. In the Kaziz al Karim, well, you are so powerful and so Karim, so noble. Taste this hellfire. Taste this hellfire. You're so powerful, so mighty, so so Karim, so noble. How the Tawbiq? This is a threat. And he, it's not an order that he's saying do it. He's saying do this in a manner to make us have to weep to fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't believe in the the torment? You can't imagine. You can't conceive of the torment that will meet you in transgressing the laws that you know I have laid down. Then go ahead and do what you want to do. If al If al do it fasna ma ashita This is a threat and we'll continue in the second khutbah bi idnillah wa alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salat wa salam على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله أصحابه أجمعين وبعد فاصنع ما شئت do what you want to do لم تستحي you don't have any shame you don't have any modesty do whatever you want to do يعني you don't have a حياة الحياة you don't have modesty and shame that stops you from falling into the moon car 
There's nothing inside of you of character and nobility and qualities that prevent you from falling to that which you know is to your detriment and destruction and to the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do what you want to do. If al mashi'ta, do whatever you want to do, and you will meet al hisab the account. And you will meet a su, su evil. You will meet the evil end of the actions that you are committing. Since haya, shame and modesty doesn't prevent you. Since you don't have enough shame not to commit riba. You don't have enough shame not to be involved in riba. Since you don't have enough shame not to slander. Enough shame, enough haya, not to cheat, to rob, to steal. Do whatever you want to do. But it's not my shit. And our women should be representatives of the Salafiyat of old, the Sahabiyat. They should look in their behavior and see, would Aisha radiallaha do this? Would Hafsa do this? Would Khadija bin Khuwaylit do this? They should look and see مَا هُوَ الْمَقْصُودِ مِنَ الْحِجَابِ الشَّرْعِي What is the purpose of the legislative covering? It is modesty. It is hishma. Don't you know that the Sahabiyat رضي الله عنهن used to be against the wall when the men would come by shooting their face and against the wall so that the men could pass they had haya, they had hishma, modesty. Acting like the women of Jahiliya and Kentucky conducting oneself like the women of Jahiliya in behavior, in attitude, in makeup, in, in the goals in life and how one speaks to men is like covering your face and exposing your behind. It's like covering your face and exposing your behind. It takes totally away from the wisdom of why that was legislated. And Allah Tabarak is a hakeem or wise in what he does, what he legislates has a wisdom to it. Behavior of modesty. Do whatever you want to do. If you have no hishma, talk to men. If you have no hishma, call them up on the phone. If you have no hishma, get in front of their face. If you have no hishma, put up on fragrances. If you have no hishma, shape your eyebrows. Become from the Nami Sat. Those who shape their eyebrows, who the Prophet Islam curse, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse, you have no hishma. They have no hishma, act like you're men. And at the same time, if we have no hish, haya, the men have no haya, because rijal, rijal, men have to have certain outside, certain qualities, certain behavior. And amongst it is al haya, modesty, that will prevent the individual from doing those things which are haram. You don't say that a person doesn't fall into that which is forbidden now and again. We say that it has to be the, accept, the exception, not the rule. The exception, not the rule. Fell into that which is haram. Listened to shaitan. Did things that were wrong to the lamb in the darkness. Now you make tawbah. Going to go over and over and over again in this matter. In lam tastahi, if you have no modesty, if you have no shame, 
فصنا مع شئته The other tafsir is similar to the first one. And that is, what the people are ashamed of, they won't do. What the people are ashamed of, they won't do. That is, what is known about the people is that there's a certain level of behavior, they refuse to accept anything less than that. They refuse to accept anything less than that. And this is where we have to go with this. We have to become to a level, first starting with ourselves. Don't forget yourself and order others for the one who forgets himself or herself and order others. is like a person with a candle lighting away from others and setting themselves on fire. Remember yourself. Take care of that. And your close family members, your wife and children, so on and so forth, But there must be a standard of behavior that we refuse to accept. You mean the kuffar had standards, as they say back in the days? You mean the kuffar had standards, as they say old school? Well, we are from the oldest of schools. We are from the way of the Prophet wasallam and the Sahaba. Do what you will. Do what you will. And you will see destruction in your life. And we will see humiliation in our life. And we will see humiliation in hereafter. And we will see the wrath and chastisement, anger of Allah, because we don't have enough modesty. We don't have enough shame. We don't have enough shame to prevent us from falling to that. which Allah Ta'ala has forbidden, this issue was so important that it was carried on generations and generations and generations. And if you have nothing outside of the Qur'an from the words of Nuh, or nothing outside of the Qur'an from the words that Allah Ta'ala relates of Ibrahim, then you have this authentic hadith in Bukhari which tells you that this was something that they were saying. And this is something they were carrying on. And this is something that generations of people were implementing. And he, that if you have no shame, then do as you wish. So there's no more need for kalam in this respect. Wherever, wherever we have transgressed that which Allah has ordered us not to transgress, then we say, إِنْ لَمْ تَسْتَحِي If you have no modesty, if you have no shame, then just do as you wish. You're destroying yourself. Then do as you wish. They say, check yourself before you wreck yourself, they say. Do as you wish. Unless the mercy of Allah Ta'ala reaches us, and unless we get up with some sincerity in, in making tawbah, Unless we get up in the jawf al-layl in the middle of the night and ask Allah Ta'ala to guide us, along with the 17 other times a day that we ask Him that with Al-Fatiha, unless we make dua for one another, that's when we're striving to better our situation. Before it'll be a situation of Jum'ah khutbah, we're okay for a few minutes, then we fall into all types of horrendous actions into next Jum'ah. This is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. We have to become better. It's a must that we become better. We have to progress. Not materialistically. Not in your dunya. In our deen. Because if we don't do it, we are the ones who will first and foremost regret it. And we will be crying on a day where many other believers will be happy. So this is something that we want to avoid. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم واقيموا الصلاه